In this video, we're going to look at how to solve a quadratic equation using a table or a graph. So the first example that we're going to look at, I have the table over here for the quadratic equation y equals x squared minus 3x minus 4. Or you could think of it in function notation f of x equals x squared minus 3x minus 4. So in this table over here, we show if we have a certain value of x and we input that into this expression for x, these are the outputs. And we could graph those and see what they look at. And we're going to do look like we're going to do that here in a second. And you're going to learn lots of different ways to solve quadratic equations, including factoring, completing the square, uh, square root method, and the ever famous quadratic formula. But if you have a table of values, you can actually solve some quadratic equations. All right, so let's look at an example here. Let's say I want to solve the quadratic equation negative 4 equals x squared minus 3x minus 4. And I have this table over here. So what this is asking for, let's really think about what this is asking for. This is saying I'm trying to find some x so that f of x is negative 4 if I put x into this equation. So it's really asking this exact same thing. f of x equals negative 4. What values of x could I put in and output negative 4 into this equation right here? Well, look at the table. Is there an output of negative 4? Hmm, let's look here. Look at that. There's a couple of them right here. This table says if I input 0, I'm going to output negative 4. It also says if I input 3, I'm going to output negative 4. So literally, the answers are right there. No algebra to show, no algebra to do. x equals 0 or x equals 3. Those are the solutions. All right, easy. Let's try another one. Let's say I want to solve, let's do purple. Let's say I want to solve the equation 6 equals x squared minus 3x minus 4. All right, why don't you pause the video and see if you can solve that by looking at the table. All right, so if we look at the table, what we're looking for here is we're trying to find some value of x so that the output is 6. That's what this f of x is 6. We substituted 6 in for f of x. What x produces this output? So if we look at the table, we see here, so I'll use my purple, we see here, and here we have outputs of 6. So the answers are x could be 5 or x could be negative 2. Now in function notation, just a little review of function notation, what that's saying is f of 5 equals 6. In other words, if I input 5, I output 6. f of negative 2 equals 6. If I input negative 2, I output 6. All right, so those are our answers. Now I actually think it's a good exercise to actually check those answers. So I'm going to clear a little space on the board here and then we'll check these answers. Let's check the answers to this first one we did. It's saying if I input 0 into here, it should come out to be negative 4. So let's check it out. Check. See if our answer is correct. So I'm going to take 0 and plug it in for x. Well, according to my table, that's what it's supposed to be. That's basically what the table says, but let's just do it out and convince ourselves. It's always nice to do that. So look at that. If I put 0 in, I do get negative 4. And not only does 0 work, but 3 works, so I could check 3 as well. So I'll put 3 in for x. Order of operations, we do the exponent first, and then we can do this multiplication. And then we subtract left to right. So 9 minus 9 is 0, minus 4 is negative 4. And that's true. That works. So those are our two solutions. Now, of course, this table method is only going to work if this number, oopsie, let's try that again. This number right here appears in the outputs of your table, or you're able to somehow, you know, figure this expand your table out from your 
uh, equation. Like, you know, maybe I could put a 6 here and then plug that in and see what that equals, and maybe that's in this number. But, you know, if you have this kind of problem you're trying to solve from a table, it's a great way to get a quick answer. Let's look at one more question from this table. Let's ask the question, what are the x-intercepts? What are the x-intercepts of this function? And see if we can get that from the table. So remember, if you have an x-squared type of gra uh, equation, the graph's going to look something like a parabola. right? It might open up, it might open down. Some of you may have already learned, if this number in front of the x-squared is positive, then it's going to open up. So the x-intercept is some point where the y-value is 0 some x value where the y value is 0. So the x-intercept is going to be the solution to this equation right here. We want the output to be 0 to get it to graph on the x-axis. And lucky enough, we have two spots here where the output is 0. So the answers are x equals negative 1 and x equals 4. Those are the x-intercepts. That's where the graph will touch the x-axis. Now some of you may have already learned uh, to solve this by factoring. The table's just saving you some steps, but it's kind of cool to see if you do factor this, which it does factor nicely, what multiplies to be negative 4 and adds to be negative 3. I can do that because there's just a 1 here. So I can do this little shortcut method. That would be negative 4 and positive 1. And then I set each factor equal to 0 and solve that and add 4 to both sides I get 4 subtract 1 from both sides I get negative 1 and there are my x-intercepts so let's go take a look at this graph there it is right there x squared minus 3x minus 4 and there are those x-intercepts we just found positive 4 and negative 1 alright so now the next thing we want to look at is how could I solve using a graph so let's say I want to solve Let's go back and look at that one that we did. We did negative 4 equals x squared minus 3x minus 4. We already did this one with the table, but how could you do it with the graph? All right, so again, it's basically asking the question. I'm going to write this a couple different ways. What value of x would I have to input to output a 4? And another way to think about this is what point is on the graph what values of x have an output of 4 on this graph? Or excuse me, negative 4 on this graph. So we'll come down to the output of negative 4, which is this y value down here. It's kind of hard to see, but these are increments of 1. So we just go down to negative 4 for y, and we draw a line across there, and we say, what points of intersection do we have? Here's a point. What's the x value there? That point is 3 negative 4. And this point is 0, negative 4. So if I put x to be 0, I'll get negative 4. If I put x to be 3, I'll get negative 4. So the solution to this is x equals 3 and also x equals 0. Now the benefit of using the graph over the table is you can estimate at least and solve any equation even if the output is not in the table. Let's say I wanted to solve um, 2 equals x squared minus 3x minus 4. Well my table over here I didn't have an output of 2. I could kinda estimate the answer should be between 0, negative 1 and 2 here and 4 and 5. But with the graph we can draw a line. We want our output to be 2. So come up here to 2. Draw a line through 2. And what we're really trying to find are the coordinates of these points. So this point is over something up 2. So the output is 2. What is that something? Well, we can estimate it. We can't get it exactly, but we can get a pretty darn good estimate somewhere between 4 and 5, I'd even say less than 4.5, I could guess maybe 4.4 would be a good estimate. And over here, the coordinates of this point, just look straight down, we're looking for this x value. Looks like 
it's going to be negative 1.4 maybe, negative 1.4 up to. So that tells us that the approximate solutions to this equation are x equals negative 1.4 and x equals 2. Let's do one more of these. I'm going to throw a trick question at you. You ready? Here's your trick question. Solve this equation. Negative 10 equals x squared minus 3x minus 4. What value of x will produce an output of negative 10? All right, let's look at the graph. All right, where it's asking for what value of x has a y value of negative 10 on this graph. Got it? There aren't any, right? So, I mean, I kind of didn't go down to negative 7, negative 8, but you can see this is the lowest point here is negative 6 point something. So if I were to draw some line down here at x equal, at negative 10, y equal negative 10, it's not going to touch. So guess what? This thing has no solution. There's literally no value of x that you could put in here and have it come out to be negative 10. You could try all day and all night and it's not going to work. We could also get that information from the table as well. If you look at the table of a quadratic, what you're going to see is you're going to see either the numbers getting smaller and then getting bigger or vice versa, depending on which way the parabola is opening. But I don't know for certain where the bottom number is here, where this bottoms out, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to get down to negative 10. It's not going to get that low. You can see when you have a table that's quadratic, you can see how this is changing. This is going from 6 to 0, so that's going down by 6. This is going from 0 to negative 4, so what that went down by 4. This is going from 4 to negative 6, so that's going down by 2. To get to 10, negative 10, I'd have to drop this number by 4, and that's not going to happen. In a quadratic, these numbers here um, have a pattern to them that you can kind of see. So to get from negative 6 to negative 6, it doesn't go up at all. To get from negative 6 to negative 4, I'd have to add 2. To get from negative 4 to 0, I'd have to add 4. And to get from 0 to 6, I'd have to add 6. All right, that's called the first difference. And you can see here the first difference has a pattern. And we're not going to get down to negative 10. So just for fun, I'll show you the second difference. What would I have to do to negative 6 to get up to negative 4? I'd have to add 2. To get from negative 4 to negative 2, I'd have to add 2. To get from negative 2 to 0, I'd have to add 2. And you can see here, this, the second difference is constant. Okay, the second difference is always constant. Little fun fact, if you take this second difference and you divide it by 2, you always get the number in front of the x squared of the quadratic equation. All right, guys, well, I hope that helped you look at quadratics in a little different way using tables and graphs.